So the other day, somebody messaged me and said, Kevin, how can I build this? And I said, you know what? That looks pretty cool. I'm going to see if I can do it myself. But I wanted to challenge myself and try and do it without having tried it before. So it's my first time running through this entire thing. You're going to see mistakes I make. You're going to see me get a little bit frustrated. And what I really want to try and do with this one is to do the whole state management thing with CSS, which I'm not 100% sure is going to be possible because when we hover on top of these things, it actually pauses for a little while, right? Like everything pauses, but not all the animations pause and everything. Um, and I, I don't know how. <laughs> and just being able to do that, it's one of those things you go, should we use JavaScript for it? Is there a CSS solution? I'm gonna try with CSS. If I have to fall back to JavaScript, I will. So yeah, I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to build. Let's go and take a dive into it. Hello, my front end friends. I'm glad you've come to join me once again. And if you're new here, my name is Kevin and here at my channel, I try to help you fall in love with CSS. And if I can't get you to fall in love with it, I'm hoping to at least get you to be a little bit less frustrated by it. And today we're going to be doing it with this spinning thing that we can see on the screen right now. And I don't want it uh, necessarily moving the entire time that we're here. So I did take a screenshot of it that will keep <laughs> this version of it on the screen most of the time, just so it's, um, yeah, so I have something that I can actually be looking at, but it's a little bit less distracting than something that's moving around. Uh, and to do this, you will notice I am using SCSS. This is SAS. I'm not going to use anything too fancy with it. That will do a few fun things, but it's going to help us save a little bit of time uh, because I think we're going to need some loops and stuff, especially for the intro animation. Um, they're, they're sort of going to explode outward. So yeah, there'll be a few things that are going on here, but uh, if you're not used to SAS, I'll do my very, very best to help explain everything that's going on and we'll look at the compiled code to see what's coming from it and everything. And so here I'm just going to do an npm start. If you're curious about this process and how my SAS is being compiled and it's running browser sync and all of that, I've covered this in a previous video so you can check that one out. I'll put the card here and it'll also be linked down in the description. Uh, and as you can see, I actually have nothing going on. We have a blank file. So let's come in and give ourselves a little bit of content. And for now, actually, we can probably make this a bit bigger, right? And we'll bring the picture back up, but we'll, we'll sort of just keep that off to the side a little bit as we're doing our work. And let's call this uh, orbit like that. And uh, the only thing, the other thing that I have done is I have grabbed the images that are actually used from here. So we have all the images uh, that are there. They're all SVGs and we have the, the person, uh, you have the, the guy's face that turns into a woman's face when we hover on top. So I've stolen that from their website and we can get... Uh, into this. So let's call this uh, or orbit is my main class. I don't really know what else I would call something like this. And then from there we have the center thing. And then we have this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight elements that are going to float around it. Um, so right away, the first thing is the image. Each one of these has text in it. So like if I don't put the image there for my orbit, I think what I would actually do is do this as a list because uh, it is, if you think about it, it's like a list of items. When you hover on top of each one, there's some text in there. So it's sort of like informational points, I guess, about like the stuff this product can do. So to me, a list makes sense here. So let's do a ULLI. Um, and then inside each LI, we're going to need two different things because if we look back at the original design here, uh, as I said, there's the text. We need the image or the icon, and we also need something for the text, which obviously complicates things uh, a little bit. It's it just makes, so what do we put inside the LI? Because we need both. So yeah, I think what we're gonna do is inside each one of these LIs, we're going to put in two divs, I think would be the easiest way to do it. Okay, we're gonna try it. I'm gonna try it with just doing an image plus a paragraph. And what I haven't done is actually got the <laughs> the, the actual text. So um, what I'm going to consider these decorational, I think. Uh, so if you have a decorational item, you don't actually have to put in the alt text. You just leave it blank. Um, and then for the text of each one of these, I guess what I'll do is I'll actually fast forward that part as I'll pull the actual text in that they're using just so we can keep a little bit more realistic on that. And yeah, this part could be really boring. So I'll just fast forward as I work through this just to get the different elements on the page. All right, there we go. We have all the text in place and all of those. Now, the other issue is my image that I want in the middle. Um, how are we going to do the image? 
I, I think what I'm going to do here is do, um, we'll call it IMG center image, just so I can easily select it. I think if anything else classes, I think we'll be okay with that. Um, <laughs> I think, except the center image actually should be a div, right? Div and then div center image, because we need both images inside of there. And so then image times two to actually bring them both in. So this would be my assets and my man will be on top. And then we have the woman or actually we'll do that the other way around. I want, because whichever one is first here, we're going to do position absolute. I guess they have to be. Um, I think it's the easiest way to do it. Now I could do that as a background image that also changes. I would be perfectly fine. I just think it's easier to deal with something when you actually bring the image in. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do it that way. Again, we're treating these as decorational, so I'm just leaving blank alts on them. I think that's going to work. Um, yeah, pretty sure. <laughs> so I'm going to come into my SAS folders and in here I've created, a, actually there's one important thing that I didn't mention, but I took all their colors. Those are the actual colors being used here. And so I have them all here in a SAS map, which just makes it easy for me to use them where I need to with SAS. And we'll sort of explore that idea a little bit and some things you can do that are nice with maps that you can't do with just straight up variables or custom properties. And actually speaking of custom properties, let me just bring this up so it's not spinning in circles. What we're going to do is jump over to my custom properties file here. And we're going to have all those colors generate custom properties for us. I still like having my colors as custom properties, even in SAS, just so if I want to light mode, dark mode, or do other theming and stuff, it becomes very easy to do because you can manipulate them. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is at use because I need to go and say like get this color file from here. So I'm doing an at use of go back a step and go to my abstracts. So I'm leaving this base folder, I'm going into the abstracts, grabbing that, and we'll just say as star. Uh, the reason I can do it like this is because I have an index file here. So the index is forwarding my color. So it's pulling it in and then spitting it out. Uh, it doesn't make much sense when you only have one file. But if we go here in my base, I can bring in all the different pieces that I'm doing. Um, so I just have like a general CSS reset that I'm applying here. Nothing too fancy. Uh, I'll link to it in the description down below. Uh, I have the orbit where I haven't done anything and here are where my custom properties are. So they're all coming into here and then getting sucked into this one. And I'm not bringing my abstracts into this one because I shouldn't need it um, to actually come through. Uh, if you're used to SAS and you've never used the use and forward, it is part of the Dart SAS way of working because import is being deprecated. I'll go in, there's a video in the description that talks about how use and forward work and because they're kind of different from the old import um, syntax that we used to have. And I just realized, did I have an import there? <laughs> I did, I should have had this as use. And in this case, it won't make a big difference. But again, import's been deprecated and at one point will not be use, will not work anymore. And so I'm gonna do an at use up here, but I'm gonna bring in one of the built-in SAS modules. So we're gonna write SAS and then color. And so, as I said, that's a built-in color module that's part of SAS. So for all the built-in modules, you just do SAS colon and then the name of the module. And that module comes with a whole bunch of built-in functions that we can use, which we're gonna use right here, uh, if all goes to plan. <laughs> and so what I'm gonna do now is I wanna loop through my list of colors. Um, I haven't done this one before, so we might run into an issue along the way, but let's open up my colors on the side and then we'll see what the compiled CSS is after as well. Um, so we have all the colors, but when I hover on top of them, let's just go back to here. Uh, when we hover on top, you can see it gets a little bit darker for each one of them. And I didn't grab those darker colors because I'm gonna do it with SAS. <laughs> so here we're gonna say each um, color name and value. Uh, let's just put name and name, just to keep it shorter, name value in colors. And so we're going to loop through and grab each name. So green, blue, orange, those are all my names. And then value are the values that are on the side here that's in this colors map. And then let's come in here. We're going to, uh, we're just going to open up my CSS file that's being generated here. Uh, let's open this to the side as well. And let's split that down. And and I'm doing that just so we can see, I can still look at this colors map uh, and explain things there, but then we can also see what's actually gonna get output um, that will happen sort of down over here. And yeah, so 
name value colors. So the first thing we're gonna do, or actually, let's come up. We're gonna do this inside my root selector. So inside my root, we're gonna loop through and make a whole bunch of custom properties. Now, for this simple example, maybe we wouldn't need to do this, but whenever I do these builds, I like to do it as if it was part of a larger system. So I think you know this would be more useful if we were actually using these colors in multiple places. And so what we can do from here is, let's say for each name there, we're in my root. So we're gonna say, uh, we want the name and name, whenever we have a variable in SAS, it has to be a value. And if it's not being used as a variable, we have to use interpolation, which just means putting a pound symbol and then wrapping it inside of curly braces. And then we can say name. So let's just do that. And then here put value and is value going to work? <laughs> value didn't work. But you can see it did do the green, the blue, the orange, the purple. Now, if ever you're doing something like this and you're, this is because it's a custom property and with custom properties in SAS, when we use variables, it's going to keep this because a custom property, this is a valid value for a custom property. So it's saying, okay, maybe you just want to put that because custom properties can contain anything. I don't want that though. So once again, we'll just do a bit of interpolation. And basically, if you don't know when to use interpolation or not, do it without using it. If it doesn't work, then stick, you know, wrap it in this, hit save again, and now you can see that it actually worked. And at this stage, this seems like a bit of a waste of time because we could have just set that up instead of setting it up like this. But what's cool is let's do this as my color light. And then we're going to come down and do a same thing. Uh, so we can let's just copy this one actually. But we're going to call this one color dark. And we'll have to shrink this away a little bit. Uh, so we have my name colored dark. And then what we're going to do, and that's why I brought this colors in here, is let's do an uh, color dot adjust. And this is one of the built in color functions that I mentioned that SAS has. And if I actually hit save now, it's going to work, uh, I think. Oh, look, <laughs> we need interpolation again because it's actually sticking color adjust there. Interesting. Okay, so we'll uh, pound symbol and wrap that whole thing in curly braces and hit save. And let's just see. Oh, we're getting an error now. It's not a color. Doo -doo -doo. HSL is not a color. Okay, it might be because I'm not actually adjusting it. Let's find out. Um, color adjust, or this whole idea is about to go out the window. I'm going to adjust the lightness by negative. 15%? Oh, and you know what? Here we probably don't need interpolation. Did that work? Maybe that's what the problem was. I think that's what the problem was. Too much interpolation going on. Ah, look, it worked. So here it's spitting out the HSL values like we'd originally set up, the 123, 47, and all of that. And here it thinks it's a post-CSS file, but let's just put that as CSS. And we should actually get See, we're actually getting a darker one now. I don't think they're quite dark enough. So let's just adjust this lightness value here by maybe negative 25%. Um, and then those look quite a bot. Let's even do like negative 40%. That looks better. Because if I'm going to put white text on them, I do want them to be pretty dark. Um, so yeah, that's <laughs> the white light and the white dark. Maybe I should have... <laughs> come up with a better name for those or, or include them somewhere else, but whatever. Uh, we have a, a, a white light and a white dark, which is great. But for the rest of this, this works fine. <laughs> um, if I was actually doing this type of thing, um, I'd probably have a little bit more of a robust system actually in my colors map, maybe instead of doing it this way. But I wanted to show off. I, this is something uh, I'm working on a SAS course right now. So it's sort of front of mind doing these types of things um, that let us work kind of a little bit faster. Um, okay, so we have my custom properties in place. Let's come over and actually start styling things up a little bit. I'm going to close down these. Um, so let's open up my orbit and dot orbit. Let's select it. And let's just say background is red because I don't know if I linked. I don't think I linked to my CSS file yet. I didn't. So we're going to say link CSS and this will be my uh, CSS style CSS. Let's just go and make sure that's actually working now. So that should be opened right here. Ha, there it is, perfect. Um, let's get rid of that red background because that's very aggressive. Uh, but at least I know my styles are working. Cool. And we'll shrink this down so we can actually see everything on the screen. And let's do first, um, this would be demo only. <laughs> demo only. We'll do a body 
of display grid uh, min height 100 vertical vh and a place content center which should put it right in the middle it does um, we're scrolling a little bit now because of how we have this set up but that's fine these images are a little bit bigger than i thought they'd be um, but we're gonna let's start there actually um, how did i um, I just called this in the orbit and then I just have center image. Uh, so there's different approaches to this. If you're more of like a BEM person, maybe you're going to have orbit double underscore center image or something. Because of how this would work and how this would be set up, if ever I had this orbit component, I'd have to have a very structured way to actually build it out. So the idea of these not having classes on them doesn't bother me or anything. So like I think nesting everything here actually makes sense. Uh, and not worried about having descendant selectors because I think descendant selectors and taking advantage of the cascade is fine. Um, so center image, actually we're gonna have a little bit of this going on, but I think it's okay for, for how we're going to do this because it's so specific, the elements that we're working on right now. Um, so let's just say that it has a width of, I don't know, 100 and, I don't know, uh, 10 rem. That looks not too bad actually. And then we're actually gonna come in here <laughs> and I don't do this level of nesting too often. It scares me when I see three levels of nesting, but again, I think it'll work. So we'll say position absolute. If those are position absolute, this should be a position of relative. And they're overlapping each other right now, which is exactly what I want. <laughs> and then we want it so when we hover on top. Uh, so what we could actually do is image and not not uh, last child hover opacity of zero no image not last child uh, oh mm, not first child one second Ha, ha, ha. There we go. Um, so if we're hovering, I mean, I could do the hover on the center image as well, but um, this works. So let's just do here a transition of opacity 300 and, 350 milliseconds, 350 milliseconds. There we go. Maybe that's, we'll do 500. I think theirs was a little slower. And we'll go check theirs, theirs out in a second, but that looks a little bit better. So basically the images are overlapping and I bet you there's people asking about what this is actually doing. Uh, so let's split this to the side and take a look at it. Um, and yeah, so it is a, a very, as I said, we're, we're getting descendant selectors pretty heavily here, but we're sort of that enforces the creation of this in a very specific way, which it would have to be anyway. It's such a specific type of component that we're creating now that this doesn't bother me that much, even though it is a little bit um, on, like descendant selectors always scare me a little bit. But then what we're doing for the hovering, it's orbit, the center image, so the, the div, we have the two images, and the image that is not the first child, when we hover over it, it will get an opacity of zero. And if we come and take a look at the index, we have the woman is first and the man is second. So when we did the display of absolute, position absolute, I should say, they overlap each other because they both come out of the flow. And because they're both out of the flow, they're here. And because man is second, the, the second element in the DOM, it's in front of the woman. And then the hover on not the first child. So this one is keeping the opacity, whereas this one is not keeping the opacity when we hover on top. Perfect, I'm pretty happy with that. Now we'll leave my style there because I'm sure we'll come back to it as we go through this. Now, the next part is where I'm not too sure. <laughs> uh, but first let's turn off my list. So we have the orbit. So we'll come here and we'll say UL. I just thought of something. My idea originally was to take the whole UL and to spin it. But if I do that, the icons and everything are gonna turn with it. So <laughs> this idea might not work we'll see what happens but on my ul i'm going to do a position of relative again because i think we're going to need a position absolute on all of the allies position relative what else do we need on this um you know what i don't do we need anything else on this 
position relative and then a position absolute on the LIs. So we can come here and say, uh, you'll notice one thing with the nesting, I'm not coming in here and nesting the LI because it has to be nested anyway. Like an LI will be in the UL, so I think this is fine. Um, position absolute. And what I might do for a second here actually is, uh, let's say LI first, uh, here, we're gonna do an opac opacity of zero, so they all just disappear. And then li first child is going to have an opacity of one. I'm going to do a transform translate x of, I don't know, 300 pixels. Uh, just so we can see it. There we go. Perfect. We can see it right there. Just so I can actually like set this up, style this one, and then we can worry about styling everything else. Uh, okay, so position absolute opacity zero. Uh, not okay. The, the opacity zero is going to get turned off. So let's move that up. Position absolute. Um, oh, let's just do list style none here. List style of none. One thing I didn't do. Let's come on the body here. Uh, this would normally be in my base. Like this is demo only, just so I'm not jumping between a whole bunch of files. Uh, let's do a font. Font family of system. UI with these builds, I generally don't try and copy them perfectly just because I don't want to like waste time getting the right Google font or whatever. Um, and sometimes we can't even get the right font. So um, let's start by giving this a background and we'll use my var. Uh, we'll do, let's just, uh, actually it's analytics, whatever. It doesn't matter which one we want. Let's do orange light. We'll give this a width of 10 rem, which might be a bit too big actually, and an aspect ratio of one over one, which will make it a perfect square. And the nice thing with that is then a border radius of 50% or whatever, uh, we get a nice circle. Then we wanna do a position, or let's do, uh, this might work, display grid. I'm not even sure if this works. Um, and star, so we select all the direct children and say place, uh, no, I don't even need to do that. I'm thinking grid place items center. Or do I even need to do that? Uh, place content center would actually get them a little bit closer together, but do that. Um, this is, I don't really need this actually. What I want to do is on these LIs, we do want to go inside and do a position, a lot of position absolute in this, absolute. Um, and then they're both lined up right at the top. So this is where we have to use that trick, like the, cent the position absolute trick to center something is to do a text, a text align, a position absolute, a top 50%, left 50%, and then a transform translate of negative 50%, negative 50%. Because the, of course that did, oh, translate, not translate X. Because this looks at the top left corner and then this looks at itself. So you get it in the top left corner and then you move it back on itself to get the thing right where it needs to go. Now I think my circle's too big. So let's make this six and maybe we'll actually go measure theirs, but yeah, let's go look at the actual site here. We'll just pull up the picture. Oh, they're a bit bigger. Um, they're smaller than this though, right? So maybe we go with like an eight. Let's shrink this down. We can make it pretty small. We'll do something like that, just so we can see both things uh, at the same time. Um, so maybe maybe 10 was okay here. And maybe my picture should actually be a bit bigger. So let's go fix it. We'll do the picture at like 15. The ratio of them looks a little bit nicer. Um, I think I'll do like 12 and eight, I think would be. I could always go and actually measure them, but we'll stick with that. Um, and that I don't mind. I was looking at the icon size. The icon size actually looks okay. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, we do want to put a, we'll just do it here, text align, text align center, and a line height of one. Okay, so here we'll come inside here and say that the paragraph 
So this is a paragraph that's nested inside my LI. So it's a descendant selector again, is going to have a background of, we're gonna do it the hard way. And then I'm gonna see if I can automate this a little bit with SAS uh, dark, because obviously we're not getting the right colors here. Um, oh, duh, duh, duh. that's true. I need that dark background to be the full size. Okay, um, which is okay, which is okay. But how do we do that? <laughs> uh, width 100% will get me the right width. Height 100% will not get me the right height. Oh, it does. And then, this, I, can I do this? Ah, nice, <laughs> perfect. Um, I am going to go back to the actual site here for a second because I want to see, oh, look at that. It's different on mobile. Uh, but if we do that, it's white text on all of them and a little bit bold. One thing you'll notice, actually, their text isn't centered um, vertically. I'm doing it vertical because that drives me nuts that it's not actually vertically centered. Um, so yeah, we'll stick with real vertical centering because it, it just looks a little bit better. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, do, do, do. so that said, let's just do it here on the paragraph because we're already text we have the text stuff coming here so we'll, we'll keep it all here just so all the text things are related to each other uh, text align center will come up one let's do font weight uh, it doesn't look fully bold it looks like semi bold so we'll do 500 because system UI you do get like I think you get from 100 to 900 maybe it's 300 I'm not sure uh, and the font will look a little different on different, you know, Mac or PC because they're it's the system UI font, but they always look good. And then the color of them will be my var. I have my orange light, so that or it's always white, right? Uh, <laughs> we get the nice white light, which is stupid, but whatever. It's gonna work for now. Then we'll come back here and uh, where did I do my border radius? Because here I could just do an overflow of hidden. There we go. Now I don't want to see my paragraph unless I'm hovering on that. So what we'll say then is the paragraph has an opacity of zero, but when I hover on the LI, the paragraph inside of it will get an opacity of one. So let's just make sure that works. There we go. So again, this is the parent selector. So my parent is the LI. So if I hover on top of my LI, uh, we can even see, let's look here. If I hover on my LI, the paragraph then gets an opacity of one. And if you like the direct descendant selector, you can even do this uh, when you nest things, it works. So there we go. Um, so perfect. And then we can just do a transition. I didn't save the transition as a variable. Transition opacity of, we'll stick with the same one that we had before. Cool. All right, I'm happy with that. That's actually, Quite a bit done. Now what I want to do is position them all the way around. It looks a little far out now, the 300 pixels. Um, I think what we need to do, uh, I just, I, I do see one process. I'd like it if it, coming out, it was actually perfectly centered with this thing. Uh, the, pr the reason it isn't is because they both, they're both sharing, like they're both, if I bring my mouse all the way across the top, like, or even let's open Vizbug. And yeah, so they're with Vizbug. Vizbug is like, um, it's a tool by Adam Argyle that lets us like highlight and you can see lines and you can do a ton, you can move stuff around on the page and do lots of cool stuff. But you can see they're both lined up at the same top point. So the easier solution right now is actually because all the images uh, or all these icons would be in the same spot, but here. To get them perfectly centered, the easiest thing to do would actually be to move the image up rather than try and move them all down because then I need to also spread them all out and have them rotate around and everything. Uh, actually, you can see where they are right now. That's that square that you see there is where all of them, where all where they all are. So I probably want to move the image over. Or I'm not sure. Let's try. Uh, yeah, they're uh, they're position absolute on everything, so we can't like use grid or flex to actually get things to go where we'd want them to go. So if that's the case, I want to move the image left. So center image. We'll do a transform, translate, 
negative, would this work? Negative 25%, negative 25%. It's too far, negative 20. How come this one didn't work? Uh, 12, you know what? Negative, um, that's 12, the other one's four. I want negative two rem. Ha, ah, so he, like here I have 12 and here I have eight. So eight, there's four left over. So I want two on each side. <laughs> Uh, which is why I went two, but that's two there. And then I also want to go negative two rem to move up. It did work. Okay, there we go. Perfect. That's good. That's a victory right there. Uh, so that means when we move things off, they're always moving from the center of the image, which is a little bit better. Um, yeah, I think that would be fine for something like this. So now we want to get this guy. This is where we run into some things we have to think about. So I think the first thing we'll try and do is get them in the right spot. Then we'll worry about trying to animate them around because there's a few things in there that are going to be hard to do. And then we'll worry about the animation actually coming out. So how is there an easy way to spread them all out? There's probably, a, if I was good at math, I bet you there is one. Um, because I could do a loop with SAS that could prop me. Maybe not though, because I need to go sort of up and over, up and then up and over by less. What would be the best way to do that? The distance is always the same, right? Like if I drew a straight line, but that means like, oh man, I don't even know how to make a circle like that of everything moving off. Um, there's probably a mathematical way to do it. Okay, let's turn these opacities. Oh, that's okay. I want li opacity zero can go away. We'll have to bring them to the back eventually too. We still have to sort out the colors and everything. Li and child one. We're gonna start there. Um, and let's just say we do I'm a little bit worried actually I might use instead of using transforms because I think I don't know if I can use a transform for this um, let's do this at a y so that moved it there uh, Oh, that's first child. Okay, that makes sense. So this will actually delete all that now. Uh, and this can be a lot smaller. Let's do 15 rem. Okay. So I think that sort of makes sense in terms of distance. Because now, okay, well, let's try and hard code it and then see if there's a better way to do this. So then that would be a translate. I guess it'd be 15, zero. This should be a regular translate. Uh, zero rem, whatever. Uh, it's not working. Oh, they're in the same spot. They're overlapping. Uh, so 15 comma, <laughs> I used 15. I don't want to use 15, do I? Or whatever, 7.5 rem. No. Yeah, because basically the problem is the further down I go, like on the four these way, or the four that go out and the four that are going to go straight up are going to be fine. It's the four that are at angles, which I need to figure out. So the this is going to have to be bigger. But if I do 15, I think it's way too far. Oh, maybe not. And then I did this maybe as a 7.5. It seems so far apart. It's not quite what I want. I want it to be more here. Let's just do 10 and 10 and see where that puts us. 10, 12 and 10. Okay, and we're gonna do the third one and do this one as a 0, 15. I just wanna see what that looks like now. This one's not perfect at all. <laughs> uh, 
like 12 like why would why it, okay that actually doesn't look bad but i don't know why that's the right numbers to put there <laughs> is there like a, a, a trick for this that i'm just i don't know it's very possible uh okay i'll just <laughs> we can just okay we have four five whoops five six seven eight so 15 then there zero 15 this would become a negative 12 negative 12 no hat <laughs> yes and then this one would become a negative 15 zero what what oh yeah okay uh, this one would become a negative 12, negative 12. And then this one would be a... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Eight. Uh, I'm not even sure actually. I feel like it's a little closer here than here, and I feel like these maybe should like a twelve point five may I don't even that's going the wrong way out. Whatever, it's close enough. <laughs> I think that looks okay. We got them all in the right position. Um, and then I'm just gonna go through, I guess, and set the right colors on each one of them. I was trying to think if there was actually a better way to do the colors. I just thought of something interesting actually, because I was thinking to set up all the colors and then set up all the background colors. That whole loop that I just created, like it doesn't really help me out. Um, I could do it very easily, but I think what I'm going to try this and we're going to see it's not quite the same thing. Or could I even use the darken then? Yeah, it's not quite the same thing I was originally thinking. But if we say here, I have the background as my orange light. If we said that it's actually okay, there's a few different ways we could do it. No matter what, we need to hard code the colors onto each one of them. Um, the, the icons obviously have the color in there in the first place anyway. So I don't really have much of a choice. Um, so background red, just so I can see what the first one is. The first one's that one, so that's the blue. So if I say background, I'm gonna, let's just try a var blue dark. Oh no, that won't work. I was trying to think of a way I could play with the opacity, but I don't think it would actually work. Um, so yeah, we'll do that. Okay, yeah, this I think this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna come up here. Oh man, no. Yeah, just so I don't, I, it's not like the best system in the world, but I'm gonna come on these LIs and we're gonna say, um, uh, color light, uh, color light with a custom property, which would be my var. Well, let's just call it. Let's just do it. This is color light is. Um, oh, var no, not color light. And what we're gonna say is uh, color. Icon. Let's do icon bg, uh, which will go to a var. I'm just going to give it a fallback that we can easily overwrite. So, and we're going to have our text BG. Uh, the reason you'll see why I'm doing this. So yeah, I, I think it's, a, it's like a small making our life easier. It's not going to make a big, big difference, uh, but it makes our life a little bit easier. So my, 
And again, this is because I'm hard coding them in. If I wasn't hard coding it, maybe there's a way I could loop through, but I can't think of it right now. Just so we can really, I could do it with SAS where I could loop through the map using a for loop and then have that for my nth child and then use that to set a background color based on the map because I can get the number of the item, like for item one in my map, take this, for item two, take this one, for item three, take this one. Um, but I think this is a bit more of a robust solution just because the icons are colored. If they weren't colored icons, maybe there's a way that we could actually build this in a little bit better. I stole these directly from their site. It's how they did it. Um, Cause if not, you could sort of link the color. You could have like all of them using custom properties, including the SVGs. And maybe there'd be a bit more of like a clever way to go about it. Uh, but let's do it this way. Cause it's not that bad. I think it's a little bit easier than, than the alternative. So icon BG is going to be a, um, I'm just gonna put red here because we're, we're gonna overwrite these, uh, red and blue. Don't worry about it too much. Um, just, we're gonna see them all come on and then we're gonna change it. So here we're going to say, we'll do it right up here. Um, background is going to be my icon BG. Uh, or actually, no, we're not going to put it there. We're going to put it. Oh yeah, actually one of them should be here. The icon BG will be here. So background is my um, var icon BG. And then they should all become that red. Let's just make it pink so it's not burning our eyes. And then, and we could even do this as like a, a have like apply a variable and then have a fallback or whatever if we want. But what I'm going to do is then come down on the paragraph where I did the orange dark, because right now they all have that orange dark. And we're gonna switch this instead of orange dark to my text BG. And so they should go all to blue. Now the advantage with doing this is the hover is linked to my text BG and my icon is linked to my icon BG. So I don't actually have to come in side each one of these and come in with an and hover for each one of them. And actually these should all also be focus. So let's just do that comma. Actually, can these, they can't gain focus anyway, can they? Okay, we'll leave them like this then I think. Um, but yeah, so we don't have to like come in and make that hover selector because what we can just do is come here and we can get rid of you and say that the, um, it was my icon BG is the var blue light. And then my text BG is my var blue dark. If that worked, nice. And so we'll try that for one more and then I'll fast forward through the rest. So this would be my, let's just hit save to see which one changes. That would be green then. Uh, so let's just choose you and you and change them to green. Sweet, right? And yeah, I think that makes it like pretty, a little bit easier on maintenance anyway. So I'm gonna stick with it like this. Uh, and I'll just fast forward as I do this for, for the rest of the icons. Awesome, there we go. So we have all of those working. I think I can close um, Vizbug down now. And yeah, cool. So, <laughs> hey, they're all working. So that's good. Now what we want to do, let's come in and say, uh, we'll come back up to my UL. This is where I'm a little worried. <laughs> let's try this. Ooh, I have a few ideas. I have a few things. I'm not sure if this works or not, but let's, let's, we're going to try. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to rotate 45 degrees and just see if this works. This would, if it works. Oh, oh. Oh no, it's not rotating on the center, but it worked. Um, rotates, they've broken out some of the properties from the transform, uh, which is a good thing. Oh wait, maybe that would actually, let's do, whoops. Let's do that again. Come on, come on. Um, let's do that again, actually rotate 45 degrees and just do a trans, ooh, transform origin of center. Okay, and let's try doing this rotate not here. Um, transform rotate 45 degrees. Oh, I forgot a semicolon. Oh, it's the same problem. Okay. 
Okay, let's actually make this an animation then. Because <laughs> I don't know why it's off. And it could be because I was playing around with stuff, but... Oh, those aren't... That's not... Looking at, now that I zoomed out, these actually need to be a little further out, right? I made like a triangle almost. Um, we'll come back to that in a second, though. Uh, yeah, we'll fix those <laughs> now that I'm looking at it. But let's wrote, let's create our animation. Um, so I'm just gonna we're just gonna come here and say at keyframes uh, orbit, and that means we're just gonna do 100% is a rotate of one turn uh is it one yeah it must be like that turn the turn unit and so you don't need a zero percent the zero percent will go to your default for whatever it is that you're doing in an animation and since we're just doing a full turn i think this i think it'll work we'll find out in a second <laughs> uh you'll notice i'm doing the ul i don't want the image to rotate which is why i don't have like i did the orbit and then i had the ul separate so let's come here. We'll stick with the transform origin of uh, center because we need that to be centered. And then let's do animation orbit. It'd be say five seconds uh, linear because it's just always the same speed and infinite. So it never stops. That's five seconds is wow. Okay, <laughs> 25 seconds. Really? Wow, okay. Now what I don't get is the center of this thing. <laughs> Why is the center all the way out there? Where's my UL? Why is the UL moving? Okay, one second here. Um, width, 100 pixels. Height, 100 pixels. Background of red. Oh, okay. Maybe we're okay then. Let's do orbit. Um, we're gonna call. We're gonna make a variable called size, and my size is going to be 12 rem. And then we can use my var size here. Uh, I don't, size is a bad name, but whatever. If I do that there, we'll do this here too, var size. And var size, you could use an aspect ratio here too. Maybe, I just need to make sure. Oh, okay. And then there's that weird thing I did on my image. Remember I had to move my image because it wasn't positioned properly? We could take that off now. Where did I do that? <laughs> this, oh yeah, center image, perfect, yeah. I think I can actually take that off now because I gave that a size. Now, do you notice something wrong? Because I noticed something wrong. Um, okay, so these ones are a lot closer and these ones are a lot further away. And that's because by default, everything is positioned in the top right, wherever the top right is now um which isn't what we want now i'm just going to slow that animation down we're going to do like 600 seconds i want it to keep running but just it's annoying to watch animations so um because yeah if we don't transform them they're all sitting here they're not in the exact middle before we do the transformation and i don't think i can transform them anyway because i want them to rotate Okay, let's, we're gonna try this and I don't know if it works. <laughs> On the LIs, we're gonna do an animation of uh, orbit. 600 seconds, so it's the same. Linear, Re reverse infinite. Can I do reverse infinite? I don't think that worked. Let's refresh the page. <laughs> And I think we'll speed things up a little bit. If this works, I'm gonna do it as a custom property. Oh my goodness, that's trippy.
Oh, you know what? It worked. It did work. They're rotating around and it's that thing I said before. Okay, cool. That did work. That's amazing. So basically the whole thing is spinning, <laughs> but because the LIs are spinning at the exact opposite speed as the other thing is turning in a circle, it the whole thing's off skew, right? It's not centered right now. So when this is on, it just looks like there's this weird like movement going on and we just have to refresh the page so they're all actually vertical at the start. And then it's the whole thing's moving, but the other things are turning the opposite way inside. So it looks like they're not moving. And then there's scroll bars and other annoying stuff happening right now um, that sometimes cause the page to shift. Not worried about that. <laughs> cool. So if we actually get these all, oh, and we're using an animation. And okay, this is what I wasn't sure about because I'm using the rotate and again, rotate browser support, not a hundred percent sure how great it is. Um, we could check, can I use rotate? Uh, Firefox, it says it, I'm in Chrome, aren't I? I am in Chrome and the rotate property is working. So I don't know, but I'm glad it's working. Um, yeah, they basically they broke rotate out from that. And there's a few other places too. Uh, I don't remember what all of the ones they took out are, but I know rotate's one of them. So you don't have to do a transform to rotate which is good because then you can do a rotation and a transform and they won't overwrite each other and conflict with each other. And that is really, really nice. And so I didn't think this would work because I thought I'd have to use more positioning on these instead. Um, now what I might do is do this anyway because I need them to be centered before we move them out. Is there an easy way to center all of them when they're position absolute. So let's just turn off this guy's one here. See, that's where it is. And I need it to be dead center. That's my LI. So on my UL, I can't use, or can I? Cause I haven't put a top, bottom, left or right. Let's just do it here really fast. UL uh, display grid place items center. Okay, cool. Nice. That works. And it's true. Position, absolute, and grid actually work really nicely together because the items will be positioned on their cell. So let's grab this here. This is when solutions just fall in your lap. When you think something's not going to work, try it anyway. And if it doesn't work, well, who cares? It didn't work and you come up with something more complex. So now, we have a problem. I said it was working. But it's not working the way I wanted it to. The UL is turning. But I wanted the allies to follow, but just turn the rotate. I didn't notice this before. I said it was working. But it's not working. Okay, let's just go on my body, just so uh, body overflow hidden. <clears throat> now the allies should still be turning in relation to the UL, but they're not doing that, right? Why are they static actually? Animation LI. the L okay just for fun row And if I refresh, they should all be like sideways. No? Oh, because this is overwriting it. So now if I refresh, they should all be sideways or upside down. Okay. So how, okay, let's just, we're going to try. <laughs> Backwards, backward, 
uh, hold position. Um, animation hold position 30 seconds linear infinite just for fun. Oh, I don't get that. The rotate. Okay, so. How come if I do it as an animation, <laughs> the rotate is taking all the allies and moving them like that instead of rotating them on their own axis. Which I don't understand why. Okay, one second. <laughs> Am I doing this like somewhere wrong? This is on my LI. Animation. Okay. Hold position is here. That's on my LI. So what I'm going to do, let's, okay, let's comment that out. <laughs> Rotate. 0.5 turn again. Uh, and let's turn off this animation for a second. Refresh the page. See, it did a 0.5 turn. That's okay, they're upside down. Now, if I come on to there, let's go find that 0.5 turn. Why is it doing the whole thing all together? Because the transform origin is here. It's basing it on the transform origin instead of here. How do I fix that? oh my goodness yeah okay so the transform origin for everything is here so it is rotating opposite but it's rotating based on that point and not where it is so just for fun let's just say transform origin is I'm guessing it's like that we would do it and now if I rotate it's not doing anything refresh now that's mucked up because of where he is now because that oh, see I can't do that so if I say left 15 rem right zero Where's my rotate? One second. Rotate now. It's just for fun. Rotate 45 degrees. Why isn't it spinning at all? Oh, that's my paragraph. Whoops. Li. Rotate 0.5 turns. It's still completely mucked up. Okay, so if we look inside my, in my LI we have, whoops, I don't know what I clicked on, inside my LIs, the problem right now is the transform origin is completely mucking everything up, but I have an LI and I have content inside the LI, so the, if this doesn't work, I'm in trouble. Uh, so what we're going to try and do, instead of this, is we're going to put it over here. Now I still have this going on here. I'm actually, mm, 
we'll leave that on here. Let's just see what happens. So that's sort of what I want, <laughs> but I think this is mucking that up and this is mucking that up. So here, I don't know, let's, we did this before, display grid and place items center. Oh, there we go. That's what I want. Okay, put this back up to 60. Turn this back on, cross our fingers. Yes, oh, thank goodness that worked. Okay, um, let's come all the way back up to Orbiter. Size, let's do um, speed will be 60. 60 is still fat. I can't believe how fast this is, it's 120. And then the reason I want to do that is here we can do var speed and do the same thing here. And here, I think we can do what we did before, orbit. Uh, change this to my var of speed and linear, infinite and reverse. Looks a little busted, so if it doesn't work, we'll go back to what they're all upside down. Why are they starting upside down? Okay, <laughs> whatever, hold position it is. Oh no, why is everything upside down? Oh, because the reverse, aha, the reverse is starting whatever. Was everything upside down before too? And I just didn't notice. <laughs> but if I do a transform rotate now of 0.5 turn. Or do I, do I have a, I have this, that's why. They're already turned, which I don't want them to be. Ah, okay. So orbit, we can stick with orbit and just reverse the orbit, reverse. And that's just when the page, there we go. Okay, that's just the hot reloading coming in. That was harder than I expected it to be. <laughs> I won't lie. Cool. Look, it worked. Let's fix my positioning like I promised we would. I don't think it's going to be too hard. Um, I forget. I keep forgetting which one the first one is, but the first one is okay. The first one is the orange one. So two is the blue one. The blue one, we need it to be a little bit lower. So maybe this goes to 15? Did that not move anything? Oh, that was the green one. Whoops. Uh, that one, no, it is those. It's those corner one. No. Hmm. Okay, I could either move this farther out or I could suck these ones in a little bit. So what if I did that at 10? Let's just move this over so we can actually see everything. Uh, wrong number. This is where, like, these things are so finicky. I have to move both of them then. If I did a 10 and a 10. Yeah, that looks more like it'd be circular. So all the 12s. Uh, 12, 12, 12, 12. We'll get changed to 10 rem instead. There we go. It's still not perfect. Let's... Let's just see what happens if I take all these 15s. I'm just pushing uh, control D to select all of them. If all these 15s get changed like a 17, what happens? A 12. I don't know. See that now it's like, be Okay, we'll just stick with 15. Maybe it's okay. Maybe it's not. Whatever. Someone will let me know what I did wrong with these numberings, and there's probably a better thing. I'm happy. We're good. I'm pretty happy with that. We have the hover effect is working. Now, the hard, this is another part that is really, really tricky, actually. And that is, when we hover on top, we actually want the whole thing to pause, right? And it might have to get bigger. The, well, look, they're throbbing the whole time, too. That's actually going to be annoying, too. But the whole thing pauses. Oh, it doesn't get bigger. It just pauses and stops its throbbing animation. Um, I'm not actually a fan of the throbbing while it's turning. There's a lot of motion going on right now. But uh, so let's start with the pausing because the pausing, there's two possibilities. One of them, there's two possibilities. We're going to try one of them because um, we don't want it to pause when we hover here. 
which it seems to be mucking up a little bit on. Oh, because we have the red box on top. So we can't see it, <laughs> because, um, but it's there. So it just means that my center image is going to get a Z index of like 10 rem. It's just going to bring it on top. Refresh. Uh, 10 rem. What am I doing? Z index of 10. There we go. So it's just on top of the other stuff. Um, because that's good. Now what we want to do is when, okay, we're going to break this up a little. Let's come here and say, and uh, so when we hover on top of the UL, the animation play state is paused. No? Oh, ah, oh, it's already working. Cause I can't hover on, oh, I was like, this is gonna be so much work because I, I'm i gonna have to make it so I can't hover cause I know I have to hover here and I thought by coming here, but because my image is on top of the UL, I'm hovering on the image, I'm not hovering on what's below the image. Um, my first thought when this wasn't going to work was actually to change this to also have a um, pointer events none and then see if I could bring the pointer events back in. Oh no, I just, is everything working? My text looked a little crooked on, ugh. <laughs> I was like, why is the text crooked? The text keeps spinning uh, when we hover on top. And it, every, so <laughs> yeah, every, the in, inner bits are hovering right now when that happens. So that is a little bit trickier, but um, yeah, I was a bit worried that if we hovered on anything else, but it looks like that's working. We just need to fix the other part, which is interesting because I want to say when I hover on the UL, hover, oh, I think we can just do this, and star, anything inside too, right? which apparently it doesn't like. That should be an okay selector. Uh, animation state paused for when I hover on my UL. But that just breaks the whole thing from happening at all. How come it was working and now the whole thing's busted? What did we do? Body. Orbit. Center image UL. Oh, oh, Kevin, the pointer events none. I didn't even see it there. It's just like, why is nothing working? Okay, that's doing that. <laughs> uh, so, and star also gets this. So we when we hover on that, this plus anything inside of it should get, so it's refreshed, everything should be straight. It's still spinning. Did I not save? I didn't save. Saving always helps. I was looking at it like, is it, is it going? Now, the problem with that is if we had the throbbing animation like they do, they're all throbbing and it's only on the one that's actually being hovered on. So maybe what we could do is actually, um, we, we got rid of our hold position, but we might actually need to bring hold position back in. Except no, we're gonna need hold position. The throbbing, the throbbing is annoying because the icons aren't actually getting bigger inside. Are they? Oh, they are. They are. Um, because I want it to s hold position should also stop. Yes. Okay. So it's fine. So maybe we do use hold position and we just say, Ooh. 
Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Can you put two animations on one thing? We're going to find out. Something I should Google before doing it, but at frames throb. Just because the speeds are so different. Um, so we're going to say 100%. And the reason I want this as an animation and not a transition is because I need it to keep repeating itself without me interacting with it. Uh, so we do a, is scale one of the ones I can do on its own now? Scale of 1.2. We're about to find out everybody. We're breaking ground here with Google be damned. Um, so the LI where I have, so we have my animation of orbit. Now, if we follow conventional CSS, we would do a comma and then we could do a throb of 10 seconds ease infinite. Does that work? No. Hold position is working. It's not working on hover anymore. Oh, wait. It is working. I see. Uh, I put this on the wrong thing. Undo, undo, undo. We had to put our animation on the stuff inside, but we want the throb to be on the LI itself. Animation throb of two seconds, because that looked really slow. Ease infinite. Uh, infinite uh, alternate, but we're screwed again because <laughs> I do really need this to be over here because I don't want it to be doing that, obviously, um, which is okay. Okay, so let's, it was working, so we can break this onto two. So we're going to break this down onto two. I'll paste that in. But what I'm going to have to do is instead of, so yeah, you can see the icons are actually growing and shrinking right now. Um, we'll do that as a one. And if I hover on top, yeah, we can still see those are kicking in. So we'll have to fix that and make sure those don't actually run. Um, but what we're going to have to do then is the background, which might muck things up a little bit, but we're, because those are images. I'm because I did this as an image. I sort of need this to have a background on it. So I think what we'll actually have to do, can I, uh, let's select, I can't do multiple of those. Okay. Let's just come here. I'll just do this fast. Um, I'm pushing alt on my keyboard to be able to select some like multiple things. I'm just holding alt as I come and select all these. Then I'm going to do a command shift P, which brings up my command palette. In there, I can start writing Emmet, choose Emmet, Emmet wrap with abbreviation, and I can just do a div, which shouldn't actually change anything that we see. Everything looks exactly like what was going on. Uh, but if we come back to my orbit now, the LI, is not going to have the background. The color is fine. The background color is going to come off of the LI itself. And it's going to be put, this is okay. There's my paragraph. So let's come here and just say uh, div. And the background is gonna be on that. I'm gonna do a background red just so I can see them. So the div, if I do width 100%, height 100%, what's gonna happen? Cool. Uh, display grid, place items center once again. That's good. And then the background goes to the one that we had before, which I should have done background color on and not background at all. Now the wrong thing is still throbbing <laughs> because I have the width. Oh, you know what? I, it, I had to do that step anyway, but I have an overflow of hidden here. Um, which is mucking everything up. So this overflow of hidden will actually come off of here, which will now have boxes that are growing and shrinking. But what we'll do is the border radius will come onto this 
we can just do here. I'm going to do it on the div. I don't want to muck up my paragraphs. I think it would be fine, but we'll just do it here and we'll do a border radius of inherit. That way it's getting the border radius from the parent. Um, so if ever we do change the border radius here, you know, if I change that to 10%, they both change at the same time because they're being inherited. Okay, now that's way too much. We're, we're throbbing, we're gonna do a 0 0.5 maybe. Okay, that's better. Now I don't want them all throbbing at the same time. So what we can do to change that, that one, so we could come in on each one of these and, you know, any animation delay. And this, you know, the first one could be zero. The second one could be 100 milliseconds. And then, so we should see actually now, if I save that. Oh, those are not on the right thing anyway. Um, but yeah, we, we could go through on nth childs and, and do it all and set it all up with animation delays. We need only this one because I'm using a, uh, we want to change the animation delay, but only on the throb and not on the orbit. So I think what I'm going to do, I think this is like, if I put one second here, uh, let's just put 10 seconds. I just want to make sure putting the value at the end here works. Refresh. Yeah, so there's no throb going on, and after 10 seconds, the throb is going to come in because we put this delay on it. But what we could do is make this a variable var uh, throb delay, right? Um, and then maybe it has a default, a fallback of 100 milliseconds. And then we could use SAS to actually generate these. So I could say for Whoops, not font face, four. I was trying to do, oh, look at that. Uh, four var, so we're just gonna say four i from one, this is a little off, one through eight, because we're counting one through eight. We're gonna do a and nth child. And I think we have to use interpolation here, like I mentioned before, and I can use my i. For each one of those, my throb is going to be I, uh, let's say 150 milliseconds times I, times I. And actually, I just realized I, come on, I think this is gonna work. We'll, we'll make sure it does, uh, but I'm gonna change this from zero through seven. The reason I'm doing that is just so the first one, this is multiplied by zero. So it's going to give us 50 times zero is zero. So the animation delay for the first one is nothing and it's sort of going to like cycle through. Uh, so let's just see if I hit save and I hit refresh. I think it worked. <laughs> let's go look here and see what that actually generated to see if it works. Oh, we need interpolation. So it didn't work. No problem. Um, <laughs> wrap that like that and there we go now 50 oh it's not doing it in the if I do this usually SAS will do math for you but that's okay we can just do a calc on that I guess oh oh yeah that's okay I feel like it's not working, uh, which would be the, that should be here, right? Uh, maybe the nth child, okay, let's just see if this is, throb is, should be working. Oh, it's throb delay, Kevin. If I refresh now, let's make this a big number. I don't think it's working though. No. Um,
Okay, I'm going to try two different things here. Uh, the first one is I do this. What happens? Okay, so now the throb delay actually makes sense. It's just not working, <laughs> which I don't quite get. Um, I just had to interpolate the whole thing because, again, it's a custom property. So it was trying to put out. Now, the calc should have worked too, but you can see throb delay is 1,000 milliseconds. So my next choice <laughs> that I'm going to try because uh, those sh should be working. Let's just take this off of here and do it like this animation. Okay, we'll just try animation delay here of var. Oh, Kevin, one second. Oh, no, it's okay. Var throb delay. What am I doing wrong? I, I fixed it. <laughs> um, what I did, I, I was putting it here and I just moved my loop up to here and, and it worked. Um, you'll see things look a little bit different than they did because uh, I was going a little bit crazy. We saw this was actually coming out. I just, I, I don't know. I tried a bunch of stuff, it wasn't working. And then I said, you know what? I know custom properties are inherited. So I'm gonna move it to the parent because maybe it didn't like how it was. Because here it's a star selector. I don't know, there was something that clearly wasn't working. So I just moved my loop up here to change where the delay would be. And as you can see now, they're they're not in sync with each other. Um, the one thing I will do is change this from an ease to an ease in out, because I think that way it, like the speed going both ways, it just bounce around a little better. Um, we obviously, I was worried about the overflow hidden on the paragraphs, but I forgot that we had this as here. Um, so there's actually a few things here, like we have my and star, which is getting my div and my paragraph. So I think what we can actually do <laughs> is delete all this from here and delete all this from here and bring it all on this one place. It's going to do the same thing, but we can also on here have the border radius of inherit on that as well. So now we don't get that weird thing that comes on. So that's a good start. The next thing we want to do is bring back on that uh, and I don't know why I got rid of that before star or star I'm just gonna make sure nothing inside of there animation play state is paused so if you hover on top everything stops no I want the other ones to keep going that's why I took this off so okay that's okay li and hover animation Ooh, that's gonna be a problem, play state, uh, play state, pause. The reason that's a problem is the other ones will keep rotating. They all keep rotating. Um, that sucks, because I think they didn't do that on theirs, right? I was gonna do this with CSS only. I didn't want to use any JavaScript. <laughs> But see how those keep running? It's only the one I'm hovering on has stopped. Their, their pulsing is a little more aggressive than mine, but that's okay. Um, is there a way? Okay, we're going to try something. We're gonna try something. Is there, okay, animation shorthand. 
Is the play state in here? It is in here. That's good. So where does it fit in? Uh, paused and then slide in. So do you need a specific? So, okay. Paused. Let's just come here. So here we have this animation. This is the second one. So this is for the throbbing. So here I'm going to do a uh, orbit play state. And then here we're going to do a throb play state because we want the orbit play state to stop, but the throb one always to be running. The throb one, I guess we don't need. Um, so when we hover, here, that's the one, that's my LI, that, so okay, so here on this one, what we'd say is animation, uh, animation, throb, throb play state is paused, does that work? Oh, I did it for all of them though. I don't want it on all my allies. I only want it on the ally that I'm on. It also stopped it from rotating for some reason. Which is weird. No. Notice, okay, we mucked something up because now everything's fine. Oh no, everything's rotating. It's rotating. It's not fine. <laughs> this is breaking things by the looks of, oh, Kevin, 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 Kevin. We're still broken though. So it doesn't, okay, one sec, let's see why that's broken. Is it just because there's no value for it? So it's saying that it's, is not defined. Is that a problem? <laughs> okay, let's just say it's not defined. Let's just say, um, is it play and pause? Play, play. Managing state with CSS guys. <laughs> One thing I just saw is this is running and not play. So that doesn't help matters that I'm using the wrong thing. Um, so let's just try it. A comma running. Let's just stick that on both of them. Hit save. I broke something, maybe. They're not throw so that it doesn't like a custom property being here at all. Now let's just try something else then. If that's not going to work, if I come here and I say animation play state like this, and I say play, uh, running comma running, does that work? That looks like it's still working. I still see it running. And then if I do running paused, that paused that one. The plane's not turning. Now some of the other stuff is off. One second. Okay, everything's doing the right thing. My gravel one is mucked up. I don't know what's up with this one, but whatever. Okay, it's working. So now, what if I do a custom property here? Var one comma running. And then we'll just do this one as var two running. It really doesn't like, oh no, it is going. Okay, that was the delay. Yeah. So, I, okay, I mucked up this guy. This guy's broken for some reason. We'll fix him after. Oh, because I'm not, ah, ha, 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 plus one. Uh, I was looping through, but this was getting up to the seventh. So the eighth one wasn't included in like the full list of stuff. That's what the problem was there. So they should all be doing it. There we go. Okay, so everybody's throbbing. Now, there, it, there is the issue with that, that while they're all throbbing, like at the at the very beginning, none of them are throbbing, but whatever. Um, it sort of kicks in. I'm not going to worry about that. Now what I want to do, okay, 
So let's change two to throb play state and see what happens now. He's not throbbing, the other ones are still throbbing. We're managing state with CSS. This is so cool. The custom properties are incredible. Uh, so we, okay, that's good. I'm gonna close this. I don't think we need it. Um, that's okay, but I need, oh, wait, wait. We should just be able to pause both of them then. Throb play state, because it only worked on that one. And my uh, orbit, orbit, orbit play state, change this one too, orbit play state. Let's see, let's see. Refresh the page, close my dev tools. Something's in the way of me closing them. There we go. Oh no, the other ones are rotating still. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, no, we can fix that. We want all of them to stop. So that means the orbit play state paused is going to come all the way up here. The animation play state, the orbit maybe could use a better name here <laughs> um, because of how I've set that up, but let's try that again. Why is that not getting it? Uh, let's just go on you and choose hover on the LI. Where's the LI? Take you on the LI, do a hover. That should have paused everything, but it doesn't for some reason. Oh, we don't want it on there. We want it on the UL, the UL. Uh, hover on the UL. Hover. Cool. Now, if the hover is on UL, the orbit play state should be paused, but it's not. So let's come in here. The orbit play state. Oh, take you off. Take you off of here. I don't actually need this one either. We just want to do that. Refresh. Yes. It's paused. It starts again. It's paused. The other ones keep throbbing. It starts again. That was so much harder than I thought it would be, but I'm so happy that it's done. Wow. Okay, cool. And we've pretty much matched. Now there's, is, as I said, a faster one. They're throbbing actually. I'm not even sure they all look like they're together now. And I did that whole like offset thing for nothing. I like mine being all different. Uh, so whatever. Oh, it's if you pause and then you let go, it actually throws things off. And I think that's why I thought like the timing of them was a little bit different. Um, they do have this fancy animation <laughs> that I was originally going to do. Not this, not this, let's wait, that, where it sort of like spins out before they all start, they load in. That I think compared to what we just did now is actually not that hard. <laughs> um, it just means another animation to start them all out on. And I think what I'm going to do is let you guys do that. And if you get it done, send it to me over on Twitter. Uh, I'll have the repo to this link down below. If you want to build it from scratch, you can do it from scratch. If you want to just add in that part that I talked about, uh, anyone who does it, I'll retweet how you did it with your thing, whatever. Uh, but I'd love to see, you know, if you guys can come up with that type of thing, you can even complete the page, fix things up, whatever you want. Uh, and if you like this video and you'd like to see other ones that I do like this, where I build out something from scratch, there is the last one that I've done as well as a playlist of all the ones that I've done right here. And with that, a very big thank you to Jan, Johnny, Stuart, and Tim, who are my supporters of awesome over on Patreon, as well as all my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner on the internet just a little bit more awesome.